Startup India, Stand Up India. This is a phrase on every single entrepreneur's mind today. Well, with bustling conversations going on everywhere and corridors full of these entrepreneurs, we caught up with multiple of them to understand as to what do they think about the initiative. There is multiple things that government can help us with. Uh, one of them being uh, you know, a, a larger break on service tax for first three years. Uh, and uh, secondly, providing uh, some kind of funding options in addition to what is already available and you know, increase uh, participation from the government in that and that will definitely help. I think on the starting up the company itself, a lot of simplification can be done on starting up and then in an unfortunate case winding down, that should also be uh, simple and easy to be done. Giving some kind of a tax break for startups at the initial uh, during the initial years, and also uh, some kind of a tax shops for uh, investments, especially the angel investors uh, who come in at a very early stage and invest little money. I am looking for a net neutral government. I am looking for government that uh, creates broadband infrastructure, and I am looking for a government which facilitates angel and. Uh, venture investing. We are looking forward to is what the government can do for early stage entrepreneurs because there's a lot happening, a lot of money flowing in for the uh, you know bigger players. I really want the government to encourage women entrepreneurs, especially in helping them build incubator programs, you know, and guiding them how to start a an entrepreneurship, how to start a business in a startup. The government can streamline all of this funding system really very well. So probably I would like to propose a Shark Tank-like pitch for all the startups. I think what we would like to go out and see is more investment uh, going into the very, very high end of the technology. So for example, artificial intelligence and the algorithms that are built on top of that. If uh, the government can come up with a policy wherein say for example the, 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 the taxation is relaxed in the first three to four years so that the cash can be burnt in building business rather than paying taxes. Initially taxation and the policies of setting up a hotel are extremely tough and if they get easier it will be great for uh, new people to start new hotels. One is on the whole bit of taxation and uh, ease of doing business side of it but what I really want from government is to focus on innovation. I'd like to see what uh, Mr. Modi is saying, which is a roadmap and an environment being set up. You know, the rest is all logistics. The tax exemptions and things that we want addressed come um, very much after the environment and the roadmap is set up. Anything that we do today to make uh, the process of starting up, the compliance that most startups are struggling with, would, would definitely make it easy. When you start a company, right, there are literally, you know, 20, 25 registrations you need to go through. And you need a lot of, you know, legal help in order to do that. Uh, how simple is that process going to be, right? Um, and I think it's both the policy and the ability to automate it, to make it easy for us. More access to funding, regulatory ease of doing business. I think that is something which um, everyone really uh, hates about, you know, working in India. And amongst the applauses of the crowd, this is what the PM had to say. Comparing the wish list to the policies introduced by the government, policies and compliances to make it easier to start up ranks as number one. The government has matched this by proposing a compliance regime based on self-certification for nine labor and environment laws. This is to reduce the regulatory burden on startups. A mobile app and portal will be launched in April, which will act as a single platform for startups for registering, filing, tracking and applying for schemes. Interestingly, though the hope is that it will be within a day, the action plan doesn't specify how long it will take a startup to be registered. The second expectation was that taxation should be relaxed for startups in their early years. This is also covered by the plan through the tax exemption on capital gains tax exemption to startups for the first three years and exemption on investments above fair market value or FMV. While the plan says startups don't have to pay income tax for three years, the question is, are there any startups that generate taxable income in the first three years? The third major expectation was that a strong incubator program will be launched and the government would streamline these investments. The government has introduced a fund of funds with a total corpus of rupees 10,000 crore over a period of four years. The government has also proposed to use the private sector's knowledge 
for setting up incubators. The last and the most important, startup founders also want the government to simplify the process of wrapping up a business. The action plan aims to allow a startup to wind up its operations in 90 days after it appoints a liquidator or insolvency professional and pays off all creditors and sells the assets. This is a very welcome move, but the insolvency and bankruptcy bill 2015 that's pending in the parliament will detail the provisions of the fast track and voluntary closure of a business. With all boxes checked, while the action plan is a good start, it is the execution of the plan which will really matter and tell us the future. Wow, what an amazingly exciting day for the startup community. We at Your Story have summarized the whole speech into 16 salient points. When make in India, to make for India be here. Startups come to India, which they have started doing. Stay in India, scale up, and not just confine. Again, I'm not suggesting that they've confined, but not just confined to tech-based industries.